An early video, Jaime? I guess you didn't drink last night and shh, dude, I'm trying to build a reputation here. Jaime, don't get effed up on New Year's so you can do the videos right and uh, that actually works better when I'm effed up. Pocket rumors and probably you're trying to find news for the wrong industry. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now and this is the Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week or a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna do things a little differently this week since we're pretty much covering the week of New Year's. We only had three videos to respond to comments. So we're gonna to respond to more comments per video this time just to compensate. Starting with Monday, I asked you, were processors important to you when buying a new smartphone? As Qualcomm was already teasing something new for CES 2015 and it ended up being the G Flex 2 with the Snapdragon 810. We have 532 comments out of which Afan says, when it comes to Android smartphones, processors change the whole user experience. Not only does it make the phone perform better, but also the availability of custom ROMs is of great importance. You have an incredible point here. Yes, the problem with Android is mainly that the processor does determine everything sometimes. Sometimes users just want user experience and that's where the processor doesn't really matter. And the Moto X proves that. Then David Jacobs says, well, I'm a gamer and I also want the best software experience. So smartphone specifications are pivotal for me when buying phones. Nothing annoys a gamer more than lag and uh, even with the hottest specifications, we have seen lag on Android, but I do get your point. Deepak says, I look for high-end specs only when purchasing Android smartphones. In iPhones and Lumias, I don't care. I have a Note 4, an iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 6, Nexus 6, Moto X 2014, Lumia 735, and Lumia 1520. So not at all a fanboy of any OS. Lucky you, man. Then Jonathan Dyer says, I would want a Snapdragon 800 and above on my phone because of its power saving capabilities. But if I'd have to choose a processor, I'd have the A10. And I'll tell you this much, the Snapdragon 800 processor was so pivotal, and I'm gonna use that word again for me, because of those power saving capabilities that yes, that was like the first time that I ever said, I want a Snapdragon 800 processor on my next phone. And in that case, it was the Note 3 that I had last year. So uh, yeah, I do follow your point as well there are some processors that are just worth it. And then Jonathan Michael Acha says, Apple's A7 and A8 chips have lower clock speeds but run so well. So I'm not a spec head when it comes to buying phones. Same goes for Windows phones, running older Snapdragon S4 but still runs perfectly fine. And yes, the spec race only pertains to Android, but then again, right now I'm reviewing the Lumia 930. And because of its Snapdragon 800 processor, you're getting Lumia denim updates and features that other Windows phones aren't getting. So I guess it is moving in that direction. Then on Tuesday, I asked you, what did you think about Apple's success in the holiday season of 2014 as the company had sold more iPhones and iPads than everybody else? And by a significant number, uh, we have 991 comments out of which the Sandman42 says, Apple gives you quality, dependable, and class in their devices. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people agree with that. I kind of agree with that too, but not in everything. And Thatcher Gaming says, when you're using an iPhone, it's a fashion statement. And when you use an iPhone, people think that you're rich. When you buy an Android phone, like a Note 4, for example, they think that you just can't afford an iPhone. And most kids today want iPhones. Talk to my little bro on what he wants, and he wants iPhone. Um, Interesting, it depends on where you're from. In my country, it is a fashion statement, but so are Galaxy phones, particularly the Note lineup. So it really depends on where you are. Can you probably share in the comments? Then Feather says, people choose the iPhone over Android phones because the average user doesn't know about SOCs or milliamp hours. They don't care about having one gigabyte of RAM versus three gigs, or that the iPhone only has a dual core chip. All they know is that it looks good, it feels premium, and it works like it's supposed to. That final part of the sentence, it works like it's supposed to, I think that that narrows everything down. People don't really care about specs. They care that the phone works well. Uh, and so yeah, that's really what makes the iPhone the iPhone, but then I'd rather have people try the Moto X. That's the Android phone to beat, seriously, when it comes to functionality, usability, and dependability as well. Then Ivan says, iPhone sells so well because iPhone always had what people wanted, great camera, design, apps, speed, and now it's finally got what people wanted, which is a big display. True, indeed. Uh, in a lot of the things that you say, but yes, people wanted a big display and finally Apple gave it to them. So I think that's the reason why the iPhone 6 is sold like hotcakes. And then Kunwar says, I think their stupidity made them buy Apple products. And uh, dude, are you calling me stupid? 
And finally on Wednesday, I asked you if you thought that Samsung was doing the right job with Project Zero, because the rumors are that the company is experimenting with a ton of designs that are wild, and even new ways to bring us TouchWiz, out of which we have 809 comments. Kalen says, Yes, I'm so glad Samsung is doing what Apple has been doing for years, making the product that just works. Who cares about 1, 2, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 720p or 1080p, 1440p or 4K, so long as it works. Then, after it works, jump on the spec wagon. Ooh, that's a very interesting comment. First of all, because the Moto X has not done this and they haven't succeeded in the Android space, and this is where Samsung is battling against other Android competitors where the spec race is important. And Apple is a product of its own. It's not trying to compete against anybody, uh, even though you could say that the size changes are showing that the company is. But I'm not sure this will work for Samsung, but again, we could be wrong. And Cyprian says, make the S6 look like the Galaxy Alpha and redo TouchWiz from scratch, and then we will have a winner Samsung flagship because since the S2, we didn't saw anything spectacular. Um, I would disagree with that. Uh, sadly, the Alpha hasn't really succeeded, and even though the design is compelling, we see it on the Note 4, and uh, I don't know, it just, it's hard to tell what Samsung needs to do right now. Surely this uh, new concept could work, but then again, the Galaxy Alpha lineup would have taken off, and it hasn't, so that's really why I'm skeptical about that. Then Halo Shadow Snipe says, Galaxy S6 will be another SC plastic uh, Samsung phone, Sony for the win. Sony's trying to sell their mobile division, dude, so I don't think that's going to be the case. J. A. Vela's R13 says, At least for me, Samsung needs the charm that the S3 had in 2012, and a different but not crazy new form factor. Hmm. I didn't like the Galaxy S3, to be honest with you, and I think that's a subjective topic. But true, it could be that the company just needs a new revamp, again, just like we saw with the S3. Good point. Then Random Gaming says, Samsung has to come up with an awesome design, better than the Note 4s, which is gorgeous and ditch touch whiz. Uh, you know, for me, the Note 4 is actually one of the better looking Samsung phones ever. I love the design. Uh, so I don't know how much can Samsung reinvent the wheel with the design here. Uh, think about it. What exactly would you like Samsung to reinvent here? I feel that their design is not really bad. Their build quality was bad. TouchWiz was bad. I would keep the design, in my opinion, and just ditch TouchWiz and do something completely different and better. But that's my opinion. Let us know yours in the comments. That's it for our Pocket Now Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. This helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.